Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your Weekend Nerd Dump Comic Books Edition for the week of March 19th, 2018. This week we've got more Batman to talk about, Black Panther, Wolverine because he's becoming a thing again, thank the Lord, and so much more. Comic Books is probably one of our bigger episodes this week, so let's jump into the intro so we can hit that news. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commando of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, let's jump into this week's sponsor. This week, again, is being sponsored by the General Lee Nerdy T-shirt, the uh, collaboration with the guys over at PunishShirt.com. The contest is still going on. Do not forget to check the description below for how to enter the contest and all the rules involved. Good luck to you guys. If you don't get one of the shirts, these shirts are available over at PunishShirt.com, and you can buy it for about $20 $20 and yeah, there you go. Good luck. Coming out the gate swinging, we're talking about Batman Detective Comics. Uh, as of issue number 982, James Tinian IV is no longer going to be writing the Detective Comics books. Uh, it is now going to be penned by Brian Hill, and he's going to be uh, teaming up with artist Miguel Men Mendon Mendonca? Mendonca? I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, Miguel. Um, but they are the new creative team uh, starting in episode or in episode in starting in issue 982, which will be out in June. And then their covers will be done by Eddie Barros. But so the significant thing about this, aside from the, the change in uh, the changing of the guard, is that this first uh, story arc that they're going to be doing that Brian Hill and Miguel M are going to be doing is bringing in Black Lightning. So we're going to see a team up of sorts between uh, Black Lightning and Batman, which is pretty cool uh, because they kind of mirror each other in a way, except Black Lightning actually has superpowers and Batman doesn't. So, but they, they both have, you know, they both have the protégés and they train their protégés in their way and they try not to kill. I feel like Black Lightning has less to do with uh, the killing than the rest, but still. So the first two books are going to be on the outside, which have a uh, implication, a kind of a callback, possibly the uh, the possibility of it coming back in the future to The Outsiders, which was a team up that included uh, Black Lightning before. Um, but it's going to be a two part uh book that's going to be called On the Outside. Uh, the first part is going to be dealing with the aftermath of the, still dealing, I guess, with the aftermath of the trial of Batwoman. Duke Thomas and Cassandra Cain, they and other young heroes don't intend to stand down no matter what Batman thinks is best. Who can Batman trust to guide them? They need a teacher and Black Lightning fits the bill. So that'll be interesting. Black, Light Black Lightning is going to come in for that first bit to help with the Bat family. And then part two, Batman wanted Black Lightning involved in the lives of his protégés, but how involved was the Dark Knight thinking? What kind of missions will Jefferson Pierce take them on, and what exactly is he whispering in their ears about Batman himself? So, kind of gonna be pitting them against each other while also having them uh, work together. Very interesting dynamic. Uh, again, this is going to be 982, which comes out in June. Next bit of comic book news is Black Panther. Uh, not necessarily Black Panther directly, this is kind of Black Panther adjacent. The Dora Milaje, the, the female warriors that surround the Black Panther, the, his potential wives, I think is what they're referred to, is kind of their role. If, if they don't become his wife, they become his protector. I don't know how exactly that works. Again, I don't read a whole lot of Black Panther, just kind of vaguely familiar. Anyway, um, they're getting their own book kind of. It's called Wakanda Forever, The Amazing Spider-Man. So they're teaming up with Peter Parker. Um, it's going to be written by, oh man, this is a name I'm going to have troubles pronouncing, 
Neddy Okorafor and illustrated by Alberto Jimenez Albuquerque. Last name's Albuquerque, that's unfortunate. Um, it's going to be a three issue arc, so nothing major, but still noteworthy because anytime we, we see uh, secondary characters getting their spotlight that's, you know, expanding that main character's universe that much more. Um, th it's going to primarily focus on three members of the Dora Milaje. Uh, o Okoye, Ayo, and Aneka. Okoye in the movie was played by Michonne, aka Denai Gur... Oh man, I suck with names today. Denai Gurira. And uh, the, the story is going to be them going to New York City to investigate a threat to Wakanda National Security where they cross paths with Spider-Man and things happen. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how this is going to be received because they're still reliant on Spider-Man. So it would be one thing if they got their own book. Uh, as as you know, they're they are doing the thing. Whereas in this book, it seems like I'm sure the S SJW types are going to s point out the fact that well, they still they still aren't getting the 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 spotlight to themselves because they're sharing it with Spider-Man. So still interesting. So we're we're expanding that universe that much more, and a crossover is always fun. And it's only three issues, so stop getting so serious. <laughs> Next up, we are talking about. X-23, um, she currently is in the books entitled All New Wolverine. That is going to be coming to an end and they're going to restart the X-23 line because Logan's back. And so she can't be All New Wolverine if the original Wolverine's back. So she's going to be back under her moniker. It, uh, the X-23 books are going to start in July, so that means we're going to have a little bit of gap between the last all-new Wolverine and when the actual Wolverine, uh, the hunt for Wolverine ends and we get a proper Wolverine uh, story, but that we're going to talk about in a second. It's going to be it's going to be out in July. It's going to be written by Moriko Tamaki, who previously wrote for She-Hulk and is going to be uh, the artist is going to be Juan Cabal, uh, who has been doing work for all new Wolverine. So it'll be really familiar territory for her. But so because this is happening, this kind of implies some stuff with the regular Wolverine with Logan and the hunt for Wolverine series. So we know that we're going to be getting four books aside from the infinity prime countdown or countdown prime. Uh, I, it's in my notes. I just don't care to search for it, but, uh, we, we know we're getting those and they're all going to be told in different. We talked about that already. There's, there's a little bit of a breakdown. We'll go over that real quick. Charles soul and Matteo Buff Buffagni. Again, I suck with names today. Sees Daredevil assemble a team to investigate Logan sightings across the globe. That's in Weapon Lost, uh, issues one through four. So that's that miniseries. The next miniser miniseries is the Adamantium Agenda, which will be Tom Taylor and Arby Silva. It, it's the new Avengers reunion as they search for their friend and former teammate. Uh, and then the, the next one is Claws of a Killer. Marika, Mariko Tamaki and Butch Juice, Guis is going to see Logan's greatest enemies work together to track him down. That one's going to be the horror style one, if I remember correctly. And then Hunt Hunt in Madripoor is going to be Jim Zub and Chris Bacallo is going to bring the most important women in Logan's life together to unravel the mystery of how of where he is and what happened to him. So and then there's an infographic that you're seeing on the screen right about here. After all of this comes to an end, they're going, what's next? As if we don't already know. There's going to be a new Wolverine book. There's no two. If if it's something else, I mean, it could be like a Logan book. It could be something else to do with Wolverine. It could not be under the proper Wolverine title, but will involve Wolverine. If it's anything other than that, then all of this is building to nothing. So it has to be that. There's why play the mystery, I don't know. Anyway, that's where we're ending that one. Next up, we're talking about a book series we haven't talked about for a minute, and that's Doomsday Clock. 
We just got the cover art for issue number six. We're still waiting for issue number four. That'll be out later this month. And then five, five will be out next month, I believe. No, it, uh, uh, two months. They're, they're two months each between. So six is still ways down, but we got the artwork for it. It's, and it shows, and this is the interesting part. It shows the original Night Owl as a marionette puppet next to another marionette. It's like a series of marionettes. You're seeing it right here. <laughs> but so in the center of all these marionettes, we see the original Night Owl and ma the marionette, the, the villain. So we know that the original Night Owl was killed in the events of the Watchmen book. Does this imply maybe that he also got teleported to the uh, DC universe proper by Dr. Manhattan for some reason? Because that wouldn't make any sense. Or is the focus supposed to be more on Marionette and, and the implications of the dolls? And all of that, so it's, it's super teasy. There's there's not a whole lot that we can nail down for sure based on this image. But as we get closer, we are going to be talking about it. And once Doomsday Clock number four comes out, we are going to definitely go over that. So next week's video, we're going to talk a lot about that. And our final bit is a real quick update on the Thanos series that's going on. Thanos issue number 16. Spoilers if you care. We have a new person worthy of carrying Molin Mjol M Mjolinar? Mjolinar? Molinar? Whatever. Uh, Thor's hammer. There you go. <laughs> so, again, spoiler alert, I'm going to ruin uh, issue number 16, which is on shelves right now. Silver Surfer, also now referred to as the Fallen One who it is, is more of a title rather than an actual entity. So Silver Surfer has become the Fallen One and is also now worthy of holding Thor's hammer in this weird future that they are doing for this Thanos book. Very, very crazy combination of powers there. Uh, like I said, it's on sale now, so go read it because that's crazy. And that is where we're ending comic books this week, guys. What did I miss? Let me know in the comments down below. What should we talk about next week? Let me know that as well down low in those comments. But if you want to go deeper into the conversation, generallynerdy.net is the website, and that's where you can do it. Links to the social media, links to the stores, links to everything are up there. All the freebies and everything, generallynerdy.net. Patreon.com slash generallynerdy is the place to go contribute directly to the channel. You can help me out in a very specific way. Before I forget though, guys, we are still going to Dink Denver next month and Starfest, which means we've got two adventures in photography planned. Definitely let me know what you guys want to see in those episodes. I already have my list of stuff. We went over it last uh, in the last supplemental video. So let's let's go over it again real quick for Dink. It is not as much cosplay based. It's more just underground comic books and such. Tat They have tattoo artists and, and so on and so forth. So Dink. Um, I'm also, they're also in a really beautiful building, so my plans, the, the goals that I've already set for myself, and these might expand by the time we get to that convention, is uh, some architecture photography, some artists, uh, and, and, and general crowd shots, or some general like street photography style stuff. That's those are my goals as it stands right now for Dink. As for Starfest, uh, I, I, it, there is a significant amount of cosplay there, so we're going to be looking for some of the best cosplay we can find. Uh, shooting some stuff at the cosplay contest that they have every year. Definitely going to be scaling that back a little bit. Cosplay contest is just so much to process. They also have an art contest at Starfest, so that is going. I'm going to see if I can maybe get some shots of some of the sculptures or anything like that. Um, so cosplay, sculptures, some more street photography stuff. They have very interesting and unique vendors at Starfest. So I'm going to get some vendor shots as well there. If there is more that you guys want to see in those two adventures in photography episodes, let me know in the comments down low. Go check out the other adventures in photography uh, videos. 
comment let's let's have conversations the purpose of that series is is kind of to illustrate as i grow as an artist in that art form and and kind of to stimulate conversation around that and and just kind of have fun with it so now we can end the video <laughs> If you like this episode, click that like button. If you are new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you are falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box to the left of my face to do that. But before you go, always, always remember, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>